So in this video, we are going to be getting set up with foundation uh, using Bower and Gulp. And if you're not sure what Bower and Gulp are, don't worry. Uh, we are going to go into that briefly just so you can understand the benefit of why we use this. Otherwise, if you know what Bower and Gulp are, this is just going to be very much a follow along just so you can get set up properly uh, and start to customize foundation in the right way rather than overriding lots and lots and lots of styles and creating additional uh, styles. So first of all, let's just take a look at foundation. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you know what foundation is. Front, it's a front end framework, uh, lots of components, uh, some JavaScript libraries as well that run off jQuery. Um, so we're going to be getting set up with what you can see here. We've just got a basic nav bar. Uh, this uh, drop down here is actually controlled with CSS, but we are going to be including scripts here as well for things like alerts and uh, the other components as well. And you can choose which components you want to include in your project to reduce your JavaScript file as much as possible. So Bower, on the other hand, is a package manager for the web. So what we're going to be using Bower for is pulling in foundation as not a dependency, but as a package. And then with Gulp, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building our front end uh, requirements or, or front end files. We're going to take uh, the Bower components uh, folder and look through that, find what we need, put it in the right place, uh, push files together or um, concatenate files together and then we'll just end up with an app.css file and an app.js file and this is really useful because it means that you can do things like eventually down the line minify css all in one go we're also going to be briefly looking at watching as well uh, so gulp gives you the ability to basically watch files so all the compilation of files and all of the processes are just done as you change files, basically. That's probably the easiest way I can explain that. So um, this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna get started completely from scratch and we're gonna start to build up everything that we need um, and, uh, and end up with this result and just make it a lot easier to manage uh, your front end and manage foundation in particular. So before we get started, let's take a look at what we're working with initially uh, within my text editor. All I have is just a basic document. There's nothing here at all. And you'll notice that I'm working within this root directory project, but then I've got a public folder within this with my index.html file in. And this is really important because all of our uh, node modules, Bower components, the assets that we create, which will be our uh, custom scripts and custom styles files, will be outside of this directory. We don't want, we don't need them to be publicly accessible. It's not massive, it's not a massive problem if they are, but it's best to keep everything tidy like this. So the public folder that we're in here is going to be uh, your, your root directory, your publicly accessible directory. So you're obviously going to need to um, install certain things to work like this. Um, depending on how you're going to eventually be hosting your project, um, you're going to need these installed on a server as well. But once you get to grips with this, that shouldn't be too difficult uh, when you do get to that stage. So the first thing that we want to install is Bower. So if you head over to bower.io, it gives you very clear instructions of how to install this and you need to use NPM to install this. So make sure NPM is installed as well. So checklist item one is NPM, number two is Bower, and then third, you want to install Gulp. So if you go over to the GitHub repo, uh, you can see exactly how to do that with NPM. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, once you've got them installed globally, um, we're pretty much ready to go. So the first step then is to initialize a Bower project. So we're going to head over to our text editor. Um, we're going to keep this open. We're going to bring up a terminal. I'm currently within my uh, directory here, uh, not in the public directory, in the root directory. And I'm going to type Bower in it. And this is going to create a uh, Bower.json file for us. Uh, this might take just a little minute, but it's going to prompt us for our project name. Uh, so I can just type project here. Uh, we're going to give a version. So I'm going to say 0 0.1.0 or something. A description, a project. Uh, all of these are optional, by the way. Main file, we don't really need to, need to specify here. Uh, we don't need to specify the types of modules either. We don't need to specify keywords, authors or license, homepage. Set currently installed components as dependencies. We don't have any, so let's just skip past this. 
and uh, add commonly ignore fast ignore list I guess we can do that as well uh, would you like to mark this package as private we're gonna say yes and does that look good so you can see here we've got our name of our project version the authors uh, we've got a description the license private is true and we ignore uh, like commonly ignored files so I hit yes and that's going to go ahead and create a bow.json file for us now the reason we have this is because inside of here eventually when we start to install things we're going to have things like foundation as a dependency so what we need to do then is uh, next install foundation so we're going to say bower install foundation save now the save will store it inside of that bower.json file. So if we wait for this to finish, you can see here that it's actually set dependencies to foundation. Now this could be a dev dependency. So we could say save dev instead. Uh, this is probably a much better option since you're not gonna use this uh, for anything else other than development. So we can go ahead and just get rid of that. And you'll also notice here that we've got a Bower components folder that's been created for us. And there's a lot more in here than we expected just by installing foundation. And we've got things like jQuery, which uh, foundation requires to be able to run its uh, JavaScript. Um, we've got things like jQuery placeholder and cookie, which we're not going to be using. We've got modernizer, which we are going to be using because there are checks within uh, the foundation JavaScript files that detect features using modernizer and obviously we've got the base foundation which contains our scss files which we're going to be using um, within gulp to compile using gulp sas so it, this might all sound a little bit confusing if you're very new to this but don't worry it's going to become very clear as we go through all of these steps so the next thing we want to do then is go ahead and initialize um, npm so we're going to head over back to our terminal i'll just clear this and i'm going to say npm init now the reason i'm doing this is because we're going to have to install uh, node packages things like gulp gulp sas um, gulp concat and uh, these just help us with our build so here I'm just going to say project, uh, I'm going to give it another version, uh, description, entry point, test. Uh, we're going to leave these all empty and it will warn us about things, but don't worry too much about this because it's uh, not in the scope of this tutorial. So now that that's done, let's just clear that. We have a package.json. So the package.json then is going to contain all of the things like I said, gulp, sass, uh, gulp itself. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and, and start to use things then. Um, so we want to install Gulp now. So we head back over to our terminal and we're gonna run npm install Gulp. And we're gonna save that as a development dependency um, because obviously we only need it when we're developing. Okay, so now that we've run that command, we've got our node modules folder here with Gulp inside of here. We're going to fill this up quite a bit because we're going to use um, different uh, Gulp package, uh, Gulp NPM packages uh, to do with Gulp. So now that we've got that done, we're going to go ahead and create our Gulp file. So under project, let's create a new file here, and we're going to call this gulpfile.js. So inside of our Gulp file, we're going to create a default task. Now eventually what's going to happen is within our terminal, we're going to run gulp and what that's going to do is it's going to take foundation, pull it all in for us, pull in all the scripts, put them inside of the public folder within CSS and JS directories, all nice and tidy so we can just include them in our page. So we need to create our uh, initial gulp file. So we need to define gulp here, we need to require it in. So we're going to just require in gulp. Remember gulp is now installed because we just installed it um, with npm. And we're going to create our first task. And this is just going to be an empty task. We're going to call this default. We're going to, uh, within this callback, we're just going to do a console log. So you ran gulp. So now we can run gulp. So if I type gulp and hit enter, there we are. So you can see that we get a, a few things happen here. It tells us which Gulp file that we're using, uh, which we know. 
uh, it tells us which task it's starting. This is the output from the task. Usually you wouldn't output from the task, uh, but in this case we just did to test it. And then it tells us that it's finished and gives us the time that it finished in as well. So it gives us uh, useful information here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just copy over some markup for foundation just to look at it in its original state. So let's close our gulp file and let's go over to foundation and let's search for the nav bar. And we're going to just copy and paste this code in. It's going to be a little messy. The indentation is not going to be quite right, uh, but we're only really just testing here. So paste this in. Uh, let me just kind of re-indent it. And let's preview this in the browser. And it looks rubbish because there are obviously no styles included. Usually what you would do with foundation is just plonk it in your public uh, CSS directory or something like that. But then you don't get the benefit of being able to update it with Bower. You don't get the benefit of being able to concatenate everything together, minify it if you want to, etc. So we'll look at doing this um, a bit later. We're not going to minify, but you can work out what you need to do from, from then on. So um, now that we've done that, we're going to create an assets directory uh, within our root directory just here. So let's create a new folder called assets. These are basically all of our scripts and styles, but they're not uh, the public files that are going to be accessed. These are what are going to be read using, our, using Gulp and then something's going to happen to them along the way. So we will concatenate files, we'll minify them, we'll uglify JavaScript if we want to, uh, and then they'll all be put into public JS and they'll be put into public CSS. So we'll create them files now, uh, folders now, so we've got them there. So inside of assets then, what I tend to do is I have a styles folder and I also have a scripts folder. So now that we've got our uh, public JS and CSS fol folders and we've got our styles and scripts directory, we want to create our gulp styles task to actually pull in the styles. Then we can include them in our head once they've been put into the CSS directory. So uh, let's go ahead and do this now. Let's pull up our gulp file again. And this default task here, we don't really need this because we're not going to be running a lot of stuff in here. So I'm going to get rid of this temporarily. We will bring back the default task because the default task is basically what runs when you just run gulp like this. So we're going to define a new task. So we're going to say gulp.task. This is going to be called styles, styles. And this is going to obviously have a callback here and we're going to do something. So in this case, all I'm going to do is console log you ran styles. Now we're going to define our default task and tell it what other tasks we want it to run. So we're going to say gulp.task default. And instead of a callback, we're going to pass an array of different tasks we want to run. So we're going to have styles from, for now, but eventually we can have things like scripts and then anything else you want to include in your default uh, build as well. Um, so let's change that to styles. Now what's going to happen is when we run gulp uh, on its own, it's going to say, oh, we need to run styles. It will run this and then we'll console log. So let's take a look. Let's clear this. And let's go ahead and run gulp. And there we go. So you can see here it says starting styles, you ran styles, finish styles, starting default, finish default. So um, we know that this is running the styles uh, task. So what we now need to do is install gulp sass, which is going to be able to compile sass for us or parse sass. So we need to install this um, by going ahead and running npm install gulp sass and we want to save it as a development dependency so we wait for that to finish and then we'll check out our package.json file and uh, see that that's been installed in there in just a moment so that looks like it's finished so let's head over to our package.json you can see in here we've got gulp and we've now got gulp sass so we can use this in here gulp or let's call it just sass, it's a lot easier. So we're going to require in gulp sass. There we go. So now what we can do is we can take our foundation sass, which is in Bower Components Foundation SCSS. We can take all of this. We can run it through 
um, our, our this task, and we can go ahead and do things like um, pipe it. Um, well, we pipe we we pipe SAS through, and then we can do things like concatenate on uh, which file we want to add this to. We can put it into a destination. Uh, we'll see how this works in just a moment. If that doesn't make sense, it's pretty difficult to explain. So what we want to do now is we want to um, actually create our first custom SCSS file. So inside of scripts, then I'm going to create a new file. Uh, sorry, inside of styles, I'm going to create a new file. And this is going to be called app.scss. And this is where we're going to uh, require in foundation from. Um, we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to take a look at a basic build here. So all I'm going to do is just write some normal CSS inside of here. And we're going to say something like uh, body, background, color, and we'll choose a nice background color. So we'll say something like EDEFF0. And our goal is to take this, run it through SAS, and then place it inside of our CSS directory as app.css. Um, so what we want to do then is go ahead and use gulp source to choose this. So we're going to return gulp.source. And inside of here, we have an array of source files. In this case, our source lives in assets, styles, app.scss. That's the file that we've just created over here. So this isn't going to do anything. It won't fail. We can still run this, so we can still run gulp. It's just not going to do anything. But what we're saying is we want to take this and then do something with it. So what we need to do is pipe SAS through, which remember we've included up here. That's going to go ahead and compile our SAS. And then what we want to do is we want to place it inside of our uh, public CSS directory. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install um, gulp concat, which allows us to um, concatenate files. We're not actually going to be concatenating any files, but if you did have any additional files, scripts that you wanted to concatenate and put into one place, this is a really useful uh, package to have, or a module to have rather. So let's just finish that line there. We'll finish this off in just a moment. Uh, let's go ahead and install gulp concat. And uh, you can Google for all of these just to find out more information if you if you want to find any more information about them and uh, the different options that they have and, and what you can do with them. So now that that's finished, it's obviously been placed inside of here. So what we can do now is we can include this. So I'm going to say var concat and we're going to require in gulp concat perfect so what i'm going to do just to demonstrate it is i'm going to say oops i'm going to say dot pipe concat and i'm going to choose the file name so we can just do this if we want to so i'm going to say i want this to be stored as app.css but you can obviously have different options here to combine different files if you want to. And then we're going to pipe it into a destination. So we're going to use uh, gulps dest to do this. So we're going to pipe. I'm going to say gulp.dest. We don't need to install anything from this. It's part of gulp. And then we choose the file, the destination. So in this case, it's public CSS. So let's just recap what we're doing here. Uh, first of all, we're returning all of this. That's just going to let Gulp know that this uh, task has finished. Um, we are initially passing an array of files, our sort of source files. We are compiling our SAS. We're concatenating. In this case, we're just choosing the file name. And then we are piping through the destination. And we want this to go in public, dot, uh, public slash CSS. So let's run uh, Gulp now. What this is going to do then is take this, compile it, put it inside of this CSS directory. So let's clear this and run gulp, and there we are. So you can see that the app.css file has been created with all of our styles. So we're now ready to include this file into our page. So let's do this now. So we're going to include CSS app.css. That's it. That's all we need to do. And then when we refresh, we get our nice background color um, there. So what we're now going to do is actually pull foundation in, which is the point of this video. So what we need to do here is inside of app.scss, remember not app.css, um, we're going to include foundation. In fact, first we need to uh, include foundation paths 
in our gulp file. And this will make sense in just a moment. So inside of um, SAS just here, we want to go ahead and pass in our include paths. So include paths. And we want to pull in Bower components foundation SCSS. Sorry, this should be an object. So the reason that we're doing this is because we don't want to manually include all of these files from this app.css uh, file. What we're actually doing here is we're saying, well, when we when we pipe through this SAS or when we compile our SAS, we want these uh, files to be included as well. And then we can just use them as we like. So let's just run gulp again. So nothing different has happened here. We've not actually included foundation within our app.css file. And the reason for that is because we've not included them within our app.scss file. Um, and this is where the include paths come in because now what we can do is we can just say import foundation settings, which we'll look at in more detail in a moment because we're going to uh, customize our settings. And this is the beauty of working like this. And we're just going to import foundation. So the settings are going to be what we can override in order to customize the foundation framework to suit our needs without having to write lots of additional styles to override uh, all of the CSS. Uh, and that's the benefit you get with this rather than just having the foundation.css file downloaded and put into some kind of public directory. So now what's going to happen is when we run gulp, all that's done is it's taken uh, the foundation settings, it's imported them and the uh, actual framework, and it's now placed that within this app.css file here. So it's taken the settings. Obviously, there are lots of variables, uh, mix-ins and things like that that are replaced at the same time. So now we see the following. So we've now got this up and running. So we're now going to look at this custom settings file that I've been talking about. And, and this is, uh, you know, why I love doing it this way. So inside of our styles, we're going to create a new folder called foundation. And then we're going to create a new file in here, which is going to be uh, an SCSS, in SCSS include called settings.scss. So this is going to be our custom foundation settings file. And we find that in Bower components, foundation, SCSS, foundation settings. So we're going to copy this, close this off, we're going to paste it inside of here. So let's take a brief look through this before we start playing around with anything. All this is, is for each of the uh, components that Foundation gives us, as well as things like the base stars, the grid, globals, and media queries, we can customize any part of this uh, of these settings. And that's going to change the way the Foundation components look without having to write lots of additional CSS, which I've already mentioned. So um, let's look at um, just go ahead, going ahead and running gulp again. We get no difference here because most of this stuff's all commented out. There are a few things I think that are not, but uh, generally everything is. So when I refresh, we get no difference. But what happens if I want to start customizing this navigation bar? Uh, all I do is over in my settings, I go ahead and look down this menu for nav bar, uh, which is to oh, sorry, top bar. So I'm going to find top bar and we get to the top bar section here. And you can see we've got all of these lovely settings that we can start playing around with. And to allow these settings to take effect, all we need to do is uncomment them. Now you need to be really careful because if, for example, I wanted to change the top bar background color, um, this oil uh, variable doesn't exist at the moment because it's commented out at the top. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scroll the way up. Let's check which line we're on first of all. Um, let's go back to top bar. So we're on line 1384. Let's remember that. And I'm going to say, well, I want the um, background color to be ju uh, I don't know. It can be anything. We don't really care. Let's say snow. So I'm going to uncomment this um, this variable and we're going to go back to the line that we were on before. I think that was 1354. No, it wasn't top bar. OK, so uh, 1384. So I'm going to change this now to that, um, that 
that variable I just uncommented, which was snow. So let's go down and let's find this again. And change that to snow. So that's all we need to do. We've now got this snow variable and we've changed the background color. Now, this isn't going to take effect straight away because we've not run gulp. We're going to look at watching for changes uh, a bit later on. That's going to make it a lot easier during development. But for now, let's just go ahead and run gulp manually. And there we go. So all that's done now is change the background color. Uh, pointless in this case because we can't see anything, but then you could go ahead and customize the colors of the buttons, the text on here. You can just customize anything. So I'll leave that up to you to do. So let's just uncomment these again uh, for now. Um, we'll just go ahead and get rid of all of them changes. Uh, but now you know that you can have a really good look through this massive settings file and start to customize all of the elements of, uh, of foundation that you want to control. So uh, let's go ahead and add this watch task now, actually, just to make it a little bit easier for us. And we'll see how this works. So this is really straightforward. We don't need to install anything, uh, particularly with NPM for this, uh, because Gulp has a watch task already or, or watch functionality already. So I'm um, down here. I'm going to define a new task. I'm going to say Gulp task. And this task is going to be called watch. And here we have our callback. All we're going to say here is gulp.watch. And we're going to choose which files we want to watch out for. In this case, we want to watch inside of assets, inside of styles, and we want to watch all SCSS files. So what's going to happen then is when that does happen, we want to run a particular set of tasks or a task. So in this case, I'm going to run styles. So what's going to happen is every time I change an SCSS file, it's going to run this task, recompile everything or rerun everything, build everything, and then uh, we can just refresh our browser. So let's take a look at this in action. We'll go ahead and change the color of the nav background again. Um, but inside of my terminal, I want to run gulp watch now. And we're going to do, this is going to do something a little bit different. It's not actually finished because it's watching. Uh, this is never going to finish unless it errors um, because it's just going to run that styles task every time we change something. So let's go back to our settings uh, file here. So settings.scss inside of here. And let's go to our top bar again. And let's change the background color. Uh, I'll just choose the CSS color now. I'll just say FFF, hash FFF. And What's happened here is because I saved the file while this was around, um, this doesn't exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to run gulp watch again. Um, I'm going to just change something and save. This time it hasn't errored because there were no errors. But you can see that as I saved, we started this new styles task uh, or we started this styles task and we finished the styles task. And without having to run gulp manually, this has changed. So I can go ahead and change this to say 222 and just refresh my browser. So now we can just run gulp watch when we want to start developing, start changing things, and then we can just refresh the browser as normal. Um, so that makes it a lot easier than having to run gulp every single time. So what we're now going to focus on is foundations scripts. So we've handled all of the styles. We know that these all work. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this again. So we're going to focus on scripts now. So what we want to do is come over to foundation here and we're going to search for alerts. And we want to, uh, obviously we have our style, so this is going to render properly, but we won't have the functionality like that. So let's copy and paste this into our index.html file. Let's paste this in and indent this and just say, hello there. So, we have the styles, but we can't click this button. So let's bring up our console just so we can debug if anything goes wrong. And uh, we're going to start to build our scripts now. So this is a little bit more complicated, but it's not massively complicated that it, you know, uh, is too much trouble. So we want to define a new task. So just under here, I'm going to say gulp.task scripts, run our callback. And the first thing we want to do is pull in jQuery, or we want to define jQuery as a source. 
we want to define foundation.js as a source and foundation.alert.js as a source as well. You can pull in all JavaScript files just using an asterisk if you really wanted to uh, from foundation, but if you don't need it, then there's no point. And bear in mind, there are a million of different ways you can write your gulp file. This isn't exactly how everyone would write it. So you can choose how best looks and works for you. So um, let's just take a look inside of foundation then inside of this JS directory. We've got foundation.js, which we want to include. We're not going to include the minified version because uh, if we do want to uh, run a minifier on this task, we can do so we don't need to do this. Um, and we're also going to pull in foundation and then foundation.alert.js as well. So we're going to do that from Bower Components foundation.js. We're also going to pull in jQuery, concatenate that into one file, and then dump it inside of uh, our JS public directory down here. So we're going to say gulp.source again. We're going to choose within this array the files that we want to include in the source. So we're going to say Bower Components forward slash jQuery dist jQuery.js. Remember that jQuery is installed along with foundation because it is a requirement. So we're pulling in this file here. We also want to include Bower Components foundation.js foundation.js and we want to include Bower Components foundation.js foundation foundation.alert.js so there's a lot there okay so you may have noticed that we're repeating ourselves here with this bow components we are going to tidy that up a little bit later just so we don't have to keep repeating the path because if the path does change if you use a different package manager it's going to be really annoying to have to go through and change it so we will be changing that in just a moment um, but the first thing we want to do well the next thing we want to do after we've chosen the source files is to pipe through uh, concatenation which we already have included up here which we use down here as well and we're gonna just provide the file name here now what we want to do is we want to pipe this through into a particular destination in this case it's going to be public JS so it's going to take jQuery it's going to take foundations base JavaScript file and it's going to take the JavaScript functionality for alert boxes, call it app.js, and place it inside of our JavaScript directory in public. So we're nearly done. What we also want to do is include a modernizer as well. So the last command I give, I'm going to return gulp.source. I'm going to choose the source. This is Bower Components Modernizer. modernizer.js and I want to pipe this pipe this through destination so I'm going to say public JS now the reason that I've done this is because modernizer needs to be included uh, or it doesn't need but it's best included in the head of your document so we need a separate file for modernizer so we're taking all of these and putting them into app.js and we're taking modernizer and putting it into public JS um, as well so we'll end up with two files inside of our public JS uh, folder so let's just cancel this and let's just run gulp as normal. Now what's happened here is we're not running our styles task because under our default, we're only running a scripts task, sorry, we're only running our styles task. So let's just include scripts here as well. So let's run gulp again and there we go. So we've run scripts, we've run styles and if we look inside of JS here, we've got app.js which contains JavaScript if we scroll down we've got foundation here as well and uh, we've got the specific functionality uh, for our alert box as well so we've got everything that we need in here now so what we can do is on our index file we can go ahead and include modernizer so js modernizer.js and we can scroll down and down here we can include js app.js so now, if we refresh, we shouldn't get any errors because uh, we've 
got everything sort of included. Modernizer has been included at the top. If we just have a look at the page source here, that's all there. And uh, at the bottom there, we've got app.js, which we just looked at a moment ago. So now this will work, or hopefully will work. Ah, it won't. Now, the reason this is not going to work is because we have an initialized foundation. Um, now, we need to include inside of, let's just close this off, inside of our scripts directory, uh, we're going to include something called just app.js. Again, this could be coffee script, and you can compile your coffee script using Gulp as well. Um, but we're just going to create a normal JavaScript file uh, just to test this out. So we're going to say document dot foundation. That's going to initialize foundation. That's all we're going to do here. We are going to be adding our JavaScript files to our watch task as well. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. If you needed to just write some code in here and have it um, automatically uh, run through Gulp. So inside of our Gulp file, then we need to include this new uh, file within here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to say assets scripts app.js so assets scripts app.js that's going to also be put into our main app.js inside of here so let's go ahead and run gulp again and let's go ahead and refresh and this should work now there we go so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add this to the watch task so i'm going to duplicate this line down i'm going to change this to scripts and we want any JavaScript files to run our scripts uh, task just here. Um, so now what we can do is test this out. So let's clear this and run gulp watch. And we're going to go over and modify our app.js file. We're going to console log hello. Without running gulp, we refresh. And there we go. So we've got our updated JavaScript files. And you can see here that that's run scripts. It hasn't run styles as well because there's no need to. We only updated the JavaScript file. Uh, so that's uh, just a little bit more efficient. So now that we've done this, we're just going to tidy up our gulp file a little bit because I'm not happy with the fact that we have Bower components repeated again and again and again. We're also repeating assets as well. What if we change this directory name? It's going to mean we're having to go through and update it again and again and again. So I'm going to create a paths object here. And inside of here, I'm just going to say Bower. That's going to be Bower components. And I'm going to say assets. And that's going to be assets. So now what we can do is we can just reference paths.bower or paths.assets down here. So let's get rid of this and say paths.bower. And let's just copy and paste this just so it's a little bit uh, quicker. So let's paste it in here. Get rid of this. Paste that in. Get rid of this. Paste this in. And down here as well. Like so, and that looks about it. So let's do the same for our paths.assets so we can get rid of this and we could say paths.assets. And we'll do the same for this. So anywhere where we use assets here. And we also use it just down here as well. So let's pop that in there. And let's pop that in there. So let's um, just clear this, run gulp again, just to make sure we didn't mess anything up. Let's run gulp watch again, just to make sure we didn't mess anything up. Uh, let's add a console log back in here. And we'll go ahead and refresh. That looks like it's fine. And let's just change something in our settings file as well. So uh, nav bar, or top nav rather, top bar, no. Um, and let's just change the background color again to white. And there we go. So that's all working. So we now have a fairly efficient gulp file. It's very basic and we are being uh, fairly explicit here about what we are pulling in. There are, like I said, really clever ways to do this. Um, you can uh, do all sorts of stuff just to, you know, uh, tidy this up and make it a lot more efficient. But you're now in the position 
where you have a styles folder, again, bringing this specifically back to foundation styles, where you can update your settings, you can import additional SCSS files inside of here, uh, either to overwrite foundation styles that can't be uh, changed with settings, and you can start to create all of your own styles for your application as well. They're all going to be put into app.css. You can reuse, if you want to, the variables from foundation here. So in this case, we're, we're setting a body background color, but what we could do is we could go ahead and just pick something like um, a color from here. So say you define all of your colors here. Uh, let's say something like, um, let's pick black. So we're going to uncomment black out. We're going to save that. Make sure we've got gulp watch running. Um, let's just clear this and gulp watch. Save that. Oops, so we've got an undefined variable oil. So where have we included that? Our top bar. Yes, yeah, sorry, we included that there. So let's uncomment this. And let's clear this and run gulp watch again. So back to this color that I've uncommented out, which is black. Inside of, uh, inside of my um, app.css file, I can now reference black if I wanted to. And what that's going to do is it's going to take them styles from foundation and apply them to my document. Um, so you wouldn't really necessarily always want to do this, but it's a good thing to know that we can reuse um, elements from this settings file. And what I find most useful is the uh, media queries from here. So if we just have a look at the media query ranges, what we can actually do is we can reuse these variables inside of other uh, styles that we manually create so we can keep this in sync with foundations uh, media uh, queries ranges so it, it you know it's really useful to be able to have things set up like this um, it does take a little bit longer to set up as you've seen but in the long run this is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle and it's gen generally a really pleasant way to develop just saves a lot of time in the future and a lot of effort in the future once you've got this set up so that is how we uh, set things up with Foundation using Bower as our package manager and using Gulp as our build system uh, to get everything set up for our front end development.